Hey y'all, it's Andrew Cash here, and this is Tidy Tuesday video. We're gonna be analyzing um, this week's data set, which is actually coffee ratings, which comes from, I think, um, BuzzFeed's data scientist, um, and it also was posted in Kaggle. So it's kind of a cool data set. Um, there's a decent amount of features, and it mainly revolves around the ratings for each coffee bean from like each farm. So first, what we're gonna do is just load in the data set. So we're gonna copy this thing, which is copy ratings, go on um, our studio and open up a markdown file. Oops, in our markdown file. Um, Okay, and I'm gonna call this like Tidy Tuesday Coffee Ratings. Cool. Expand that. Okay. I'm gonna delete this stuff. And I'm actually using my laptop, so I'm gonna be a little bit slower, but I'm sure that'll be good for everyone. In this case, we're just gonna load up the Tidyverse and the coffee ratings. So um, I was reading the comments last week and I saw that a lot of you guys wanted to me, wanted me to talk about specifically R Shiny. And I actually have done a few R Shiny videos in the past where I just kind of make some random dashboards. However, I think it'd be a good idea to really go on and explain the main ideas behind R Shiny. And I actually prefer Shiny dashboard over like the base R Shiny. So we'll probably make a dashboard for this, this coffee stuff. Additionally, I think um, I wanna kind of show you how to do like a workflow um, to actually create these dashboards. Um, for me, since I have two monitors and that's my daily driver, it's very easy for me to make dashboards where I basically will have like a, a markdown file on one monitor and then another monitor, I'll just have my app running but I'm sure a lot of you guys just have a laptop or want to do it while you're on the run. So I figured I would just make it, um, make this dashboard on a laptop and kind of show you how I would make these like basic dashboards that you might want to show. Like if you're doing a reporting project, uh, it's easier to give someone a nice little um, dashboard for them to kind of look at than it is to show them a basic HTML or PDF file. So that's what we're going to be doing today. First, what we're going to do is actually looking at this um, data set. So, I'm just gonna do a glimpse on it. And we can see that there's a lot of stuff here, right? But the main thing that I see is, is first, we have a lot of these like random factors or this kind of like messy um, data. But right here with like aroma towards like uh, what uniformity, clean cup, sweetness, uh, copper points. Um, I think that's something that we'll probably be using a lot in our analysis. So one of the other things we should see is total cup points. So I guess it's like the rating. If I go to uh, say right here and read the data dictionary, it says like total cup points, which is the total rating over points available on a zero to 100 scale. Uh, we can see like species, owner, country, farm name. I think when we're making a dashboard, it would be cool to have like, you know, if you click on a country, it show like, oh, who, here are all the farms, you know, here are like all the types of beans. So we'll, we'll probably play with a lot of that type of stuff. Might also play with like the method of the processing method. So it could be like a washed or kind of like a dry method for it. And we're also gonna be using these aroma grades because I think the big idea between this coffee rating thing is saying like, oh, um, if I want like say a uh, Ethiopian cup, how's the acidity grade or how's the aftertaste or how's the overall flavor, stuff like that. So. Um, we'll definitely look at that. Um, the bottom end with like certification, uh, unit measurements, stuff like that, I'm probably not gonna really look at. Um, I'm most gonna look at kind of like the bean quality and probably like the origin and stuff like that. So let's start going into it. Um, additionally, I think he also talked about how, where is it? He, altitude is a messy column, so I'm probably gonna ignore that too. But let's look, let's start looking at something. Um, so if we're really gonna be centered around like the rating, we should always kind of look at the total cup points. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so we'll do uh, coffee ratings, uh, ggplot, 
he has a total cup points and then do a, I don't know, a, a GM histogram. Okay, cool. So we see that it's definitely centered around, um, what is it, a 75 and stuff like that. So it's pretty biased towards one end. Um, it's not like a normalized rating at all. So maybe if we do a scaling, so we'll say like scale X uh, log 10. And then, yeah, we can see how it's a little bit more spread out. Um, that's pretty interesting. So most people are kind of grading pretty highly. This just could be because uh, it's kind of like a subset of it. Let me see if, if I can read more about it. Um, data was collected from the instant review pages. Copy cupping. Okay. So I guess it's also, what is it? Fair trade coffee. So that might be a little bit biased. So this is only fair trade coffee. And fair trade coffee might just be better than the rest of the, like, you know, the grocery brand stuff. That kind of makes sense. Um, one thing that I was thinking about is when we're looking at it, we can see that there's um, like owner, um, farm name, company. I'm curious, what are the what are the differences between that type of stuff? So let's do that. So let's kind of look at these factors. So we'll select, uh, was it owner? Oops, owner, company, what was it, and farm name. And then what I'm gonna do is actually a distinct just to see how many combinations there are. So there are about 722 different um, combinations of owner and company farm name. Okay, cool. So one thing I think we should do is let's just do simple counts. So let's just count owner first. There's about 316 different owners. Um, I'll do a sort equals true, sort true. And we see like it's Juan who Luis Alvarado Romero owns about 155, was it companies or farms? So we should probably figure out what, what they do. So let's just count it. Company. Okay. Interesting. And then one thing that I'm also thinking, so this owner, Juan Luis uh, Romero, he owns 86 Unix Guatemalas, and I'm sure the Unix Guatemalas has like a certain amount of farms. Okay, so an owner can own multiple companies and a company can own multiple farms. Um, okay, so let's, let's just make sure that that makes sense. Company, farm, uh, com, uh, farm, oh, farm, name. Maybe do a, so there, there's a decent amount of NA, so I'll just drop those just to see it. Yeah, so there's there's multiple farms farms, but you know, the, these companies own say like okay they own Rio, like twenty three Rio Verdes thirteen Fazenda okay cool that makes sense so I'll just say owners can own multiple companies companies and companies can own multiple uh, farms. So these farms could also be um, um, owned by like multiple companies. So let's, let's figure that out too. Coffee, ratings, oops, ratings, count farm name by, what is it? Um, comp, company. Maybe like a sort equals, Maybe we'll do a, a range by farm name. Okay, so one thing we also see is there's also some data quality where it's like 2,000 farmers, 2,000 farms. I'm not sure if that's the same thing or not. Um, okay, and we'll maybe we'll do a drop in a first two just to make sure. So let's just farm and stuff like that. Okay, so 
we can kind of see how like Yunnan, Louise Herbs, R and D Center, Yunnan New Country Tech, they're kind of the same company. Um, I I would suspect they're the same company, but they're on different like there might be like subsidiaries of each other. So how about we should just do owner, right? Good farms have different owners. Okay, maybe we'll go. Oops, we'll go there. Actually, and then I can do, a, I bet I can do a account far name sort equals true. Yep, so, so farms can be owned by multiple people or multiple owners. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's actually start making some charts for our dashboard. And what I'm gonna do first is let's just look at, uh, like a country's, um, let's see here, let's think about how we can do this. We could look at a country's just like aromas and flavors. I think that's probably a useful thing. So let's do that. So coffee, ratings, and then I'll do, uh, what is it? Select country of origin and then I want to select all of those rating things. So it's, what is it? Aroma to, where else is it? Aroma to, I think it's copper points. Cause I think that's scale of 10. So let's do that. Copper points. Cool. And then actually I'll do a, what is it? Is it total points again? Total cut points. And then we'll maybe we'll do a gather key equals key value equals value minus total cup points minus country of origin. Um, what's going on here? Copy ratings then. Oh, and I'm I'm actually gonna do another thing. So I'll say mutate. Uh, row num equals row number. So what I'm basically doing is I'm validating whether it's the same thing. Um, if or, or selecting all the good ratings. Right, and then we could do like a like a group by row num. What is it row num? And then summarize um, we'll say, was it a uh, value equals some value? And then we'll say, uh, total cut points equals mean total cut points. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's right. I also said mean total cut points just cause I didn't want to drop this. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, but I forgot how to do it. Um, I want to say it's dot drop equals false, but it's fine. So we know that, um, that uh, verify that we selected the correct features for point analysis. Cool. So now what we can do is we can go back, select that, remove the total cut points. I mean, total, yeah, total cut points. And then what we can start doing is we can say, let's filter first, say country of origin equals, let's say Ethiopia. And now let's do a basic ggplot just so we can see it. So we'll do a gather key equals key, key value equals value minus country of origin. And then it's a simple, uh, was it a group by, let's say country of origin and key. And then we can say summarize value equals, and we'll say what we want to calculate is what's the average uh, profile for each country. So we'll say value equals mean value. And then we can just ungroup it. So technically, um, 
we could just not select that. We could just say, uh, we could actually do this first. This this will probably make it a little bit cleaner, so we can remove that. Do that. Uh, select that stuff. And then we can just throw this into a, I believe, a gather. And instead of contrib origin, we can do that. So it's a little bit cleaner. Then we can do a uh, ggplot, you know, uh, y equals key x. Actually, we say uh, x equals value, y equals key plus gm, like column, right? Cool. And then we should probably do a mutate um, key equals factor reorder. We'll do by key and value. And we have a nice little thing. Honestly, I'm not really liking this chart. I think there's a lot of chart junk just because, um, you know, they're only, um, this for was it Ethiopia's queen cup uniformity and sweetness are the only thing that are higher. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna switch to X equals key, Y equals value, switch this to a, uh, a geom point and then do a geom segment, x equals key, xn equals key, y equals value, and yn equals zero. So this is what's called a lollipop chart. And I, I really love a good lollipop chart, chart. I'm also gonna do minus value. So it looks a little bit cleaner. There's less width, there's less um, space that's taken out. You know, Edward Tuff would say it's a little bit more efficient. Um, size equals five, just for a little bit of readability. And then we'll say color equals key. And okay, so now we're just gonna do some basic formatting. So we'll say like plus theme legend dot position equals none. And then for uh, Y lab, I'll say like average flavor, oops, flavor profile, um, oops, xlab, remove that. Cool. Another thing that I'm probably going to do is adjust the labels a little bit. So I'm going to do a, what is it? Mutate key equals, let's say, is there a replace? key and then we're going to do that with the underscore with a space we're also going to do a str what is it uh to title i think that'll do it cool so after today's clean cut copper points hmm you know, i got i have another idea i'm actually going to change the y lab to that and i'm actually gonna oh Oh. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. And after that, I'm going to add a title to it. So I'll do a labs title equals average flavor flavor profile. Cool. So what I also want to do is maybe change those. I might just, uh, you know, I might just do a core flip. Let's see how that looks. You know what? I kind of like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do that and I'm going to remove that. So right now we have one, uh, one chart that we can use in our, in our dashboard. So let's go on to another one. So one thing that I was thinking about is if we go back, we could see like what's unique to each country of origin. And if we look down, where is it? Let's see here. Um, we see there's, oh, there's different processing methods. Um, what else is there? There's different producers, there's just different regions. Uh, let's see here else. 
what what can we look at and there's oh yeah there you go and there's different varieties so if we do this if we do a uh, coffee ratings select coffee oops was it a uh, country origin and uh, variety we see that there's a lot of different varieties one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to probably drop the NAs. So I'll just say filter country of origin is equal to Ethiopia. And then we'll just select the variety. Right. And then what I'm going to do is count the varieties. Maybe do a, um, and then we can just do a, uh, a mutate variety equals vector reorder variety by n and we can just throw that into a ggplot right as x equals variety actually we'll say um, x equals n y equals variety and maybe throw that into a gm column right and that's a pretty good looking chart we can just say um, we can x lab or was it y lab and then plus uh labs title equals like bean variety right and then we can also throw a fill equals variety and that makes sense that's a good good chart that's something that's probably gonna be what i think would be kind of interesting to look at you know if in case you want to look at you know other africans african um coffee and see the varieties that they have right Ethiopian heirlooms, Gesha, other uh, Ethiopian uh, Yirgish chef, um, which is a very popular uh, uh, coffee. I never order it because it's about like $18 a pound, but I'm sure you guys might want to try it. So once we have that, I'm, I'm curious what else we can do. Um, one thing that I think would be useful is, is if we have a table too. So a lot of dashboards have tables. So let's figure out like what would be something that we would want to summarize as a table, right? And I think what we should do is basically say like filter um, country of origin is equal to Ethiopia. And then what else do we want to do? So we want to select probably total cut points, um, probably the country of origin, just so when they filter it, we can know what it is. What else do we want? Uh, maybe maybe the region. Maybe the region would be useful to have. Right? Yeah, maybe the region. Oh, and also maybe I'll do a uh, total cut points and then we'll do the uh where is it? Species too. The species of coffee. Right, so we have all that stuff. And what I'm gonna actually gonna do is I'm gonna do a like a group by uh, species and region, and then do a top and of total cut points n equals one ungroup, and then we'll just arrange by in descending order total cut points. Right, so that's 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 pretty cool. Maybe I won't. Man, I, I don't know if I want to do region because that, that looks very long. Maybe you can also do a, a mutate for this thing. So like, was it mutate region equals str? Was it? Um, what is, what is it? SDR trunk, trunk it. And then I'll do region. Um, just let me look up SDR trunk. Trunk. Okay, yep, yeah. So SDR trunk will say like eight and say, was it 
right. Oh, I thought do that. Maybe I'll do a a ten or a twelve, right? So that would that's good. Additionally, what we can do is I can also do um pull in the cable. Was it? Oh, I don't think I have it on my machine, so I'll install the was it cable extra package. And what the cable package cable package does is it basically makes nice tables, um, which is useful for you know doing dashboard style tables. So it's not just a really gross looking you know output. Which so it doesn't look like say that we can do a nicer HTML um, thing. Oops, library. Cable, extra, I could throw that in. Right, so it looks a little bit cleaner. This is just HTML on the um, Ethiopian thing, so it's going to look a little bit odd. That's fine. So now what I think would be interesting is if we actually do some selections of, say, if we want to select Ethiopian copy, I think the big idea behind this is we need to compare it to the other countries, right? So what I think we're going to do is I'm going to do a select, uh, what is it, uh, country of origin, and was it aroma to, um, was it cupping, aroma to, let's see here, was it, aroma, da, 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 da. cupper points points and what we'll do is we'll do a, a mutate and we'll say um, we'll just say highlight or we'll say yeah highlight or comparison yeah I think highlight because this is the thing that we really want to highlight equals if else country of origin is equal to Ethiopia then a highlight and then no highlight, right? You got that? Yes, okay. So another thing that we should do is we should just say, uh, um, was it select? Now we don't really need the country of origin anymore. And what I think would be interesting to do basically is do like a confidence interval of the differences of it. So kind of just run a t-test on all these um, different type of factors. I know that there's probably like a violation of the assumptions for the t-test. However, I just want to grab the confidence intervals and it's really not for a great statistical analysis. It's just a uh, highlight or the main differences between this selected uh, origin of coffee and the others. So definitely not the, the most uh, insane analysis, but I think it'd be kind of a useful analysis, especially for a cool little dashboard. So that's what we're going to do. Value equals value and then minus highlight. I think we also need the load in the broom package. So broom. Okay. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a group by key, a do, and then a t test equals t dot test. Uh, was it value to highlight? I think it might be the other way around data equals dot. And then I'll do a tidy. Let's see what that works. Yep. And then what we can do is a was it a nest t test. And we have our intervals. So you have our estimate of the difference. And then we have the, the conf confidence uh, low and confidence high. And that's what we can do for the uh, the comp center rules for, so we can kind of like show them in a ggplot. So was it ggplot? Yes. X equals key, Y equals um, estimate, color equals key plus geom. Um, I think it's, is it air bar? Or is it geom? It's like line range or is it point range? Point range, yep. Yes. And then a Y min equals comp dot 
low y max equals conf dot high. Let's see how that works. Cool, we have that. That's exactly what we want. Uh, I'll do also a uh, geom uh, h line y intercept equals zero line type equals uh, we'll say oops dashed plus chord flip plus theme le legend dot position equals none. Cool. Um, another thing that I might do is be kind of cool to do some coloring on it, but just uh, I'm gonna do. Yes, I think we should do some coloring. So I think the big idea is if these little intervals are, if both intervals are to the right or to the left of zero, so if they're above or below zero, then it means that they're different. If they're not, then that means they're probably the same. So how are we gonna do that? Um, first, I'm gonna do a mutate and we'll say um, different, di we'll just say different is equal to, and when we're doing multiple kind of like decisions or multiple checks, it's easier to just do a case statement. So we'll say, um, if conf.low is less than zero and conf.high is less than zero, then it's different if conf.low is greater than zero and conf.high is greater than zero, then it's different else what do you do true it's not different we'll just run this and then i'll say the color will equal to difference and i spelled difference wrong i tried to do diff both different and different difference <laughs> okay cool and we can see it here it's working how we would like it okay great so i'll just say Plus, was it Xlab is done, is not? Yep, so now we have that. And then let's just add a title. So we'll say, oh, uh, was it labs? And say title is equal to how different is um, the origin to the rest? How different is the flavor? Oh, flavor. Oh wow, why, why is my flavor pro, how different are the flavor profiles? Great grammar. Okay, and then what I also wanna do, if you notice, I wanna, I wanna kinda clean up those things. So what I'm gonna do is, what are we gonna do here? Okay, and we'll do a mutate key equals str replace key. And then we'll str to title and I think that works that works perfectly one other thing that I might do is I think I, it'd be kind of nice to reorder this so I'll do a, a reorder so I'll do a eh. yeah I think I think we should reorder it okay so I'll do that too so mutate key equals re factor reor reorder and then we'll reorder it by key and the let's just say the estimate there we go and actually maybe we'll do maybe we'll do the absolute estimate no no we'll just we'll just do estimate estimate that makes sense it will do minus estimate cool so i think that's a this is a good looking chart um let's go back and see if we need a change anything no i think that's it okay so i'm gonna actually save this i'm gonna call this tidy tuesday coffee what uh boy foot ratings <laughs> ratings okay so i'm gonna put this back down in my um uh my uh my markdown file i'm actually gonna delete this a little object area even though it doesn't really matter and now i'm going to do is open up a shiny web app what we're going to put this in is i'm going to put it in my 
Tidy Tuesday. Tidy Tuesday, and I'll call this um, coffee app. Oh, coffee. We'll just call it coffee. I think it renames it coffee app, right? Okay, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. So what I'm also going to go to is I'm going to go to Shiny Dashboard, and I'm just going to copy their template for it because it is much easier to do it like this. Like this. I also am probably going to have to install Shiny Dashboard, so I'm going to do that first. Install .factures Shiny Dashboard. Okay, so I'm going to load this up. Wait for it to install. Nothing too crazy. I'm going to paste this in. Cool. Paste it in. Um, I always forget how they name the titles. Okay, it's just title. Great. So I'm going to say title equals coffee dashboard. Just run the app just to make sure it works. Save it. Pops out. And we have our coffee dashboard already. So cool. Um, so one of the main things between um, uh, our shiny and just any type of shiny dashboard is essentially it's just a bunch of inputs and outputs. And inputs are the things that you're kind of put into your output. So, so inputs, you want to think of it as like filtering things. So like an input would be, I want to filter by Ethiopia. Okay. So first, I think the main, the big thing that we could do right now is just do our outputs. It kind of sounds counterproductive. However, since we already have all of our charts that we want to fit into it, we can kind of get away with it. We can just paste them in and then start adding in the inputs later. So we're going to do that. We're going to go in Tidyverse Broom. I think we also do Cable Extra. And we'll just, you know, make sure those are loading. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go and grab our our dash our uh, charts that we want to put into it. We only made four charts, so it's not going to be too hard to put into it. Okay, and our charts are the things that we want to show, which would be our outputs. How we want to filter our chart is how we're going to do it with our inputs. So this is our flavor profile chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to say output, and you have to do uh, you know, the dollar sign, and we're going to name this output, and we're going to say coffee, uh, we'll say coffee flav uh, flavor, oh, fla flavor, and we'll say, since it's a plot, you just do render whatever it is, and then you throw in the, the curly brackets, so you can do any data manipulation stuff, okay, so that is our first plot, cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this plot and this is called like bean variety. So we'll just say like coffee variety or something like that. So output coffee variety, render plot, boom. And that's our output right there. It's just that plot, nothing too crazy yet. And then now for this one, this is actually a, um, a cable. And what cable actually does is writes in HTML anyways. So you don't actually have to do any rendering. So you can just say output, say coffee, we'll just say table, and then we'll say function and throw that in. Oops, no, function, function, and throw that in. Because what these things are doing, so render plot, is just converting this ggplot object into an HTML thing. So since cable already makes it into an HTML thing, an HTML object, we can just do function since we don't have to render an HTML into an HTML object. I know that sounds a little confusing, but um, it's just something that you kind of get used to. And it's really not too not too complicated. You just kind of have to um, learn how um, each kind of plot is named after for like the rendering. Okay, so now for our last plot, um, this will be our coffee like diff. So render plot. And boom. So now we have all of our plots. And that's basically it. So that's basically all of our server functions. We're done with it. Now we can just start adding it uh, to our, our dashboard. OK. 
Okay, so in this case, I'm going to say fluid row and fluid row because I want two rows, right? I want two rows of for the plots. You know, it's going to be a four by four grid. One, two plots for each row, two plots for each column um, or tables, you know. So the first plot that I want to add on to it is I want to, I think it'd be interesting to do bean variety and maybe, um, yeah, I'll do bean variety and, uh, uh, let's see here, bean variety, bean variety and average pl uh, flavor profile. I actually might not do the core flip. Wait. Actually, yeah, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So so now they have a row. So basically said that we want two rows of, 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 uh, of outputs and each output is inside a box and that's dependent. That's because we're using shiny dashboard. So we're gonna do a box and a box, right? And our, and our outputs will be a, um, will be a plot copy flavor. Let's see what that looks like. Oops. Oh, oops, that's why, sorry. So you can't, so we're gonna first try to do coffee flavors as we, we wait, no, it's not coffee flavor. Oh, wow, whoa, 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 what am I doing here? <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um, We have to load in our data. So we're, do, we're gonna also load in the coffee ratings. Sorry about that, guys. And then, um, if so we're gonna try to do just box, you know, coffee flavor. Let's see what happens if we do that. We run into an error because it's not found because we actually have to surround it next to a plot output. And then we can do the coffee, like coffee flavor, Oop. flavor. So that's what that does. And now we have our plot. Very nice. So now we can also do our next one. So we'll do a plot output. And what did I say? Uh, we wanted the bean variety, right? So bean variety. Um, and we'll call that, we call that coffee variety. Yes. So we call that coffee variety. And we'll just throw the other one in too. So we'll do a plot output. And we'll say, was it the coffee diff? Coffee diff, right? Coffee diff. And we'll do another one. And I think this is a render. Uh, and I think we can actually just say render UI. And it's a uh, coffee table. So let's see what that does. Okay, cool. So this is the thing, I think actually I don't have to do that. I can just say coffee table. Let's see, let's see if that works. Oops, maybe. Well, what was it? Render, was it UI? Maybe I'll do that. Hmm. Just let me let me just Google this a little bit. 
just said render cable and R shiny. Function table output. Oh, okay, so it's just table output. Nothing too crazy. Table output. Oh, I just dropped my mic. And we can see our table right here. So we're gonna have to do some every some more things. So was it cable, um, cable, extra, and then it's um, what is it? Cable styling. We do cable styling. We go to the cable package. You can see there's many options. So you can do like um, you can do striped. Uh, hover, condense, stuff like that. Let's look at it. So one thing that I'm looking at is maybe we don't want this to be super wide, right? Maybe we want to actually do something, change it a little bit. So what we can do is if we go here, we can say um, where is it? Was it HTML only features? And we can actually do a scroll box. So we can say uh, scroll, oops, scroll box. And we'll say, what is it? High is equal to 50% or something like that. Let's see what that does. Or maybe we'll just do 200, 200 px, and we'll say width is equal to 200, 200 px. I'm not gonna mess too much with the table because it's not really important. Um, you can just kind of tweak the widths and heights, and you'll eventually get it. It's really dependent also on your how you're viewing it and stuff like that, and and the size of your your dashboard. Okay, so I definitely want to make my width a little bit bigger. So I'll do my width to be what. 500 px this is my last time running it and then we'll start doing our inputs okay so now I'm gonna actually go on to the inputs. So one thing we can do is we just do select input and there's a ton of different inputs you can do. You have to go on R shiny and kind of look it up. But all inputs have a ID. So we'll say this, we'll say, v, and I like to start call the IDs with a V. So V and we'll say um, country and you give it a label and then you give it the options or the, the uh, choices and our choices for, for what we want to do is copy ratings. But specifically, what I want us to do is select country. Uh, was it uh, what's origin? Where's that? Uh, so what we want to do is the was it country of origin? Yep. So select country of origin, distinct. And we'll do a range by country of origin, and we'll also do a drop and NA. Okay, so we're gonna throw that in there as our as our one input, because this is gonna be a simple dashboard. We only want to filter by country of origin. So we do that, and then we can run this app and see how it looks.
Okay, cool. So we have that, and you can change it around like that. Um, one thing, I, actually, I'm going to do something very quick. I'm going to change this to, I'm going to say, points. Z, oh, I don't think you actually need to do that. So I'll just say points, and then we'll say country is equal to that. Okay, so now that we have our input, we can say uh, we have our select input, which is the countries called V country. What we can do is now we can just put it into our actual server function and say, since we want to filter it with our given input, which is our select input called V country, we'll say select uh, input V country. So any country of origin that is equal to our input um, input variable V country. And we can kind of just go through it and change where we were filtering already. Um, and that's it. So I'm just going to do that. Find where I said Ethiopia. And we can just run this app and call it a day for this Tiger Tuesday. So we can see that we're selecting Brazil right now. Ooh. What's going on here? So let me reload the app. Okay. So that's weird, weird, but okay. So we have Brazil right now, if we, but if we change it to say Ethiopia, we can see that the dashboard changes, right? And that's basically the end of the end of this video. I'm gonna do just some basic uh, cleaning for this. I'm not sure why it's doing this. So maybe I have to do points is equal to that. And then I'll say country is equal to that. Let's just do one last tweak and then I'll kind of do some summary thoughts on, on dashboarding with uh, Flux dashboard. Hmm. Very odd. Okay. Oh, I bet I know why. So I'll just do, I'm going to do that. One way, so what it's saying is, oh, we don't have enough. So what I like to do if we don't have that uh, with the top end, I'll just do a arrange by uh, arrange by was it uh, points descending order and points, and we'll just slice one. Let's see if that works. That's kind of how you get around the top end problem. Hopefully, I won't eat my own words when I do that. But let's see if it works. Hmm. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, that's why. There we go. So I just I just was running into an error where it wasn't uh I I forgot that I renamed the calm and it didn't specify in the downstream pipeline. And there we go. We have it. It looks fantastic. So just to collect my thoughts, um, it's actually very simple to throw in um, a transition in R Markdown uh, report into a dashboard. And I actually think it provides a lot of utility. And although this uh, video was pretty slow, it probably took a decent amount of time. Once you get the hang of it, it is very fast. Additionally, what I recommend is to just keep it simple. So if you know you're always gonna be making these like four panel dashboards, you can save this as a template for future dashboards. Uh, you don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Um, um, finally, I guess the main thing that you have to remember is that our shiny or any shiny dashboard is about inputs and output, outputs, where inputs are essentially your filters and your outputs are anything you're trying to see. Um, a problem with the outputs is that there's different types of like renderings or like uh, plot outputs. So for example, um, when I was doing the table output for cable, um, there's multiple ways to actually render it. Um, so that's called, that's just going to be a lot of trial and error, but it's not too bad. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.